Hello out there, my name is Benjamin and I welcome you to the world of designing using Adobe Photoshop CS6 with Blabend Solutions. In this video and the other series of videos to come, I will be showing you everything you need to know about Adobe Photoshop, starting rightly from the basic level to the advanced level. But before I kick start, let me use this opportunity to say a very big thanks to you for clicking this video. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and let me know your thoughts about all my videos in the comment box below. If you are already a part of the family, thank you so much for passing by once again. So with this being said and done, why don't you come along with me and I will show you the best and easiest way to make beautiful design works using Adobe Photoshop. In this short video, we will be discussing about rasterizing a layer. I believe this is not the first time of seeing this. Are you still confused about what it does or how to use it? We will be asking ourselves some three questions and I believe by the end of answering these three questions, you come to realize and understand what the rasterize is all about. So the first question is, what at all is rasterize or rasterization? Why should you rasterize? And when do you have to rasterize? So we'll find the answers to these three questions that I just asked. Let's first of all take the first one. What at all is rasterize? Now, Photoshop graphic elements can be a vector image or a bitmap image. Let me try to explain what a vector image and a bitmap image is. With a vector image, but by default, shapes and text are created on a type of layer called a vector layer. No matter how much you zoom in on a vector layer, the edges always remain perfectly sharp. Now, when you rasterize a vector layer, Photoshop converts this layer to pixels or in other words bitmap image or bitmap layer You might not notice a change at first, but when you zoom in on a newly rasterized layer You will see that the edges are now made up of tiny squares called pixels What sense at all am I trying to make here? Let's take a part. Let's take a look at uh, some examples so I have my Photoshop open already open in here, right? I already have my Photoshop open in here. We're talking about the vector layer. We're talking about the vector layer. We said that by default, shapes and text are created on a, uh, on a type of layer called the vector layer. So with my shape tool selected, let me create something like this. And this is it, All right? Good. So this is a shape tool that I have created, All right? Good. So. What I'm trying to tell you here is that with a vector layer, no matter how large you zoom on it, no matter how large you zoom in on a vector layer, the edges always remain perfectly sharp. Let's take a look at this. So control plus will zoom this and we have, these are the tiny boxes. These are the tiny boxes that makes up the pixels. Look at the edges. Look at the edges. They are still sharp. Now let's zoom out and see. Control minus will zoom out. Control minus will zoom out. And still take a look at the edges. Just take a still take a look at the edges. And that is the work of the vector image. No matter how large you zoom in or out of it, it's it still retains its quality. It doesn't lose any of its quality. You get me? Now, with the bitmap image, let's take a look at this bitmap image. I have this bitmap image in here. Right? So, let me turn the visibility of the shape layer and turn on the visibility of the camera layer. Now, with this image, let's take a critical or a large zoom on this image and let's see. So, control plus will zoom in. 
and now we can see the tiny boxes that makes up the layer let's look at the edges look at all the edges have turned into the all the edges are also box like tiny they are also made up of tiny boxes right so now let's zoom out by pressing ctrl minus and you will still see that the edges are not sharp as compared to that of the vector layer right so that is the difference between the vector layer and that of the bitmap layer that is why most people most people out there will prefer using adobe illustrator to create a logo rather than using photoshop to create a logo so let's move on to our second question which says why should you rasterize why should you rasterize the simple answer i can give to this question is that certain tools like the brush tools eraser paint bucket flow and filters only work on rasterized layers in order to use one of these tools on a vector layer the layer must first be converted to pixels now take notice of this whenever you convert a vector layer to pixels it loses its vector functionality meaning that the shapes and text can no longer be scaled to any size without some loss of quality so we made known that the text layer is no longer editable meaning you cannot change the words or the font if you rasterize a text a type layer be, be notified that you it is no longer editable now let's practice this and see let's do this and see so with our type 2 selected in here right good let's click anywhere and just type so i'm going to type this basic right basic let me select the move to so we have basic this is this this is our type we type in here and this is the vector layer right this is a vector layer now let's try to change the words in here i'm going to change the b what is basic to d so it will become daisy right good so to do the change in here just come back to your type two here click on it look at the difference in here you can see that the cursor is like a box like cursor with the pointer on the far left top corner right good when you try bringing this cursor close to the text it turns from this box like shape to a singular bar look at this look at what happens good and now you can click in here and you can make the change in here right so let's clear this b and change this to d basic now we've made changes to the font now let's change the font type the font type right so it, it was this king leonel and let's think to something like this all right all right this is okay good so what we were saying is that when you rasterize a type layer you no longer have accessibility to edit the text or change the font type of it let's see if what we are saying is true so to do, let's rasterize this so to do the rasterization right just come onto the layer that you want to rasterize right click on it and choose rasterize type and there you go we've rasterized the layer right so now let's try making let's try changing this d here back to a how do we do that let's come to our type 2 here select the type 2 and remember how the cursor looks like and let's see if it turns back to look like that no and it's no uh, uh, so it, it, it no longer recognizes this as a type 2 but rather a normal object so let's select a click can i clean i can't edit this so that is what we meant by when you convert the type 2 to a rasterized layer you cannot edit it right that is it so let's try changing the font type and let's see the same thing happens you can make edit to it so certain tools like the brush to eraser paint bucket tool and the filters only work on the rasterized layer so let's see now this layer is not rasterized so let's see if truly they are the only things that works on it so we have our brush tool selected and take a note take notice of this this is how the case looks like when i selected the brush tool it moved from that pointed arrow to this meaning that we cannot apply this brush tool here unless something happens let's click and see it says this shape must be rasterized before proceeding rasterize the shape so let's say we don't want to rasterize this like 
could not use their branch tool because content on the layer is not directly editable. So that's the work. So meaning if you uh, don't rasterize the, the layer, a vector layer here, you can't use most of these tools here to make edit to the shape or modifications to the shape. So another one is the eraser tool. So these are eraser tool here. The same thing applies here. Click on it and it says the shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. Rasterize the shape. No, we don't want to rasterize the Alright, so it says okay. And we talked about the pink bucket for so let's click right click and that is the pink bucket. Pink bucket. Good. So now let's work on it. You see the shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. And that is the work of it. So now now that we've got to know that we need to rasterize it before using certain tools on the layer let's now rasterize and see if truly we can use those tools on the layer so let's say okay so we've rasterized the layer right so now let's come in here and choose a color that we want to turn this shape into that with that is with the pink bucket so let come here and just click in it like this oh that's great we've, so meaning that until we re we rasterize the shape, we cannot use these tools on it. Let's use the eraser tool and see if truly. So, oh, okay. So meaning we needed to rasterize the layer first before using those tools on it. All right, All right, okay. So that is the work of the rasterizer. Let's go. Let's now move on to the third question, which says that when do you have to rasterize at all? When do you have to rasterize? Now, at, certain, at a certain point in your project, you might need to rasterize a vector layer to use the tool or get the edit that you want, right? Before you rasterize a vector layer, take notice of this. Always make sure you duplicate the layer and work with the copied layer. How do you go about duplicating a layer? It is very simple. To do that, I'm going to show you three easy steps. The first step is come to the layer in here. So let's say you want to uh, make modifications to this layer, right? So to duplicate this, make sure you select you selected the layer, right? Click on the layer and come to duplicate layer, and there you go. So it gives you the it, it requires you to enter a name for the layer that you are copying. So I say, okay, so let me say, maybe uh, QWERTY, right? Okay, so then let's say, okay. So that is the first style of duplicating a layer. Just right click on the layer in here and choose duplicate. Now, the second part of it is with your layer selected, come to the layers tab in here. Click layer and say duplicate layer. The same thing happens, it gives the option to rename the layer so if you are done renaming it just click ok and there you go now the last option here is to use the shortcut key which is ctrl j ctrl j and now my layer is duplicated so always always take notice of this before you rasterize a vector layer always duplicate it before you rasterize it and work with the copy layer this by so doing this preserve the original vector layer in case you need to go back and make changes to the layer later on so that is basically all about you making duplicates to the layer i believe with this three question asked and answered you will understand what rasterization is and how to go about doing rasterization I believe you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up by hitting on the subscribe button and also checking the bell icon so as to be notified whenever or when next time we release our next video please don't also forget to like share the video and let me know what you think about this video in the comment box below until i come your way next time it is still black band solution and see you in the next video